I can't decide what's more exciting, the self-pumping nozzles or the fact that gas is still under $2 a gallon. Welcome everyone, Adam uh, the Woo here. Before we delve deep into today's vlog, I have a serious question I wanna ask you, and I would like your honest, humble opinion. Do you notice a difference between a can taste Mountain Dew versus a bottle? Because I sure the heck do. Been drinking this stuff a long time. And I honestly can tell the difference. Is that a little bizarre? It's my second channel, Daily Vlog Channel. It's the Daily Woo. And the big bottles taste a little bit different than the small bottles. And the small cans taste different than the big cans. My mind cannot wrap my head around that. It's the Daily Woo. At the site of the Murray Lock and Dam now. And above the dam is a large walkway for pedestrians and bicyclists. A bridge, you could call it. In fact, here in town, they call it a big dam bridge. I'm not making this up. It is pretty neat how the structure is built directly above the actual working lock and dam itself and stretches all the way across the Arkansas River. There was nowhere to park my RV down there, only car parking spots. And everywhere that wasn't a car parking spot was a million no parking signs. So I opted to put Large Marge off the side of the road right over there. Such a beautiful day. A little windy and a little cool just the way I like it. If you have ever been to Central Florida during the holidays, during the Christmas season, especially around the Walt Disney World area, you have no doubt heard of the Osborne Spectacle of Lights. And contrary to some people's original thought when they hear that name, it had nothing to do with the singer of Black Sabbath who had a reality show about his family. It's a different man with the last name of Osborne. And he resided here in Little Rock. And I wanna show you where it all originated. It did not start off as an original Disney idea. That came way later. In fact, it started off as one man's love for his daughter. In the late 60s, Jennings Osborne and his wife started the Arkansas Research Medical Testing Center and became very wealthy. And then in the late 80s, they welcomed the birth of their firstborn. And one of their daughter's favorite things was Christmas decorations. And in 1986, a very young girl asked her dad can we put up some Christmas lights? He said yes, and it began. At their house a little bit up the way here on Cantrell Road, he hung up 1,000 lights that first year. But slowly but surely, the Clark Griswold in him started to come out. The following years were bigger than the ones before. More lights, more lights, bigger and bigger. In fact, he ran out of room and he ended up buying the two properties next to him. Two houses next to him were purchased just so he could string up more lights. I parked here because this is the only place anywhere in the vicinity of the mile that I have to walk down to, to the destination. I tried finding something in the residential areas. There was no room. The only other options would have been to just stop here in the middle of the road or maybe park on the median there, black sheep style. A hike down a main thoroughfare would do me good anyway. A little walk in Little Rock. Kind of rhymes. And all these little side roads I attempted. Plenty of no parking signs. I think where I stopped is good though, as long as there's not a tow truck waiting when I get back. Continuing with the story though, by 1993, the property that is directly before me was completely engulfed in over three million lights. Starting at the edge of this premises, house number one, main house number two, and on the back side of that, house number three, all were part of the display. Side note, this house is currently uninhabited and I did consider driving up and parking in the driveway. I thought about it very hard as I passed by here to and fro a handful of times and I opted not to do that just in case. In fact, from the appearance of it, even the main house is not being used and lived in. This is it. The birthplace of the Osborne Lights right here along these walls. 
It happened. Because of the immensity of that 1993 display, six of these neighbors filed complaints. They were not happy about the traffic problem that was congregating through here. Jennings had an interesting response to those critics and those complaints. Did he take the display down? No, he doubled it. The following year, not three million lights, six million lights. And he illuminated them for over 30 days straight from dusk until after midnight. This furiated the neighborhood. The massive Christmas tree, the huge globe, the angels, the canopies, all that you might be familiar with from Hollywood Studios was all right here. The Arkansas court system stepped in and told him he could only run the lights on this home, the middle home, and the third property for 15 days during the holidays and only for a couple hours a night. But that was not good enough for him. In his own words, paraphrasing, he wanted to create a little bit of Disney magic on his own for people who could not afford to go to Disney World or Disneyland. They could just cruise down this road in Little Rock and get a little magic for themselves. The locals, however, did not share his passion, fearing that emergency vehicles would not be able to get through because of the traffic the order stood. He was, however, not finished. He gave it one more try and took it to the Supreme Court. This case went all the way to the desk of Clarence Thomas, who upheld Arkansas's ruling and the lights of Little Rock were shut down. At least on the grand scale that they once was. I found some old photos back when the lights were displayed on the homes. Way back in the day, a photographer named Jason Barang posted them on WDWmagic.com 17, 18, 19 years ago. They're the only photos I found online, so I want to give him a little plug and show you those photos now. These are daytime shots so you can get the perspective of how everything was set up. The Christmas tree was perched there on that section of the roof and the carousels right over in here. And you can see everything else the house and the walls and the facade all still look the same as it did then, but no remnants of the lights remain. Just standing here, you could even imagine that the lights were just up this last holiday season because everything looks identical except the fact that there are no illuminating strands that remain there. The dancing angels that are now pretty much world famous from Streets of America in recent years at Hollywood Studios, he used to all be right there, just basically on a net going across the front of the far right property. Christmas is starting now. In fact, even that globe that we all know very well used to be perched right in there. And another interesting fact, it had a dot on the map where Bethlehem was and Little Rock. The tale of his legal troubles made news all across the world. This fell on the ears of Walt Disney World, who knowing the passion for making people happy that Jennings had, offered to take the lights and move them down to Florida. His only condition was, as long as they were gonna be on residential street, just like this residential street, which they were for a while. And then they bulldozed residential street and moved on to New York Avenue, later streets of America. So I don't know what the, ramifications of that was, but that's how it got started. The only lights on display currently here, however, are ones that have fallen into major disrepair. And if you look very closely, there are serious remnants of those days. Look at the nails that the lights were hung on. That is incredible. The wiring that harnessed the electricity it was said that one night's power bill was the same as a normal home in town's full year bill. Just think about this. If you've ever stood in Orlando watching those lights dancing around, none of that would have ever come to fruition if it weren't for that nail and this nail. That, don't forget your roots or don't forget your nails. Even some little brackets and harnesses up there for the strands to lay in. Remnants of the past 
pieces of history reminding us of the evolution of the Osborne lights. Jennings Osborne, a man who did not make everyone happy, but made a lot of people happy. Even after his passing in 2011, the lights continued and people smiled at his creation. Now the real question is, where are the lights now? Disney's Hollywood Studios has stopped lighting the lights, illuminating them in the holiday season. Where will they be next? There are a lot of rumors floating around. Hopefully, they end up somewhere to be seen and loved. Thankfully, I haven't been towed. It's still up there on the side of the hill. A cruise by the property one last time. Just like so many people did at a lot slower pace than I'm doing. Taking a gander at the lights. He's looking for the lights. All he wants to see is the lights. Just just give him some lights, please. He just look at him. He's he just looking for the lights. He just wants the lights. I have been invited to go on and hang out on the spooky talk show tonight here in Little Rock. And researching what their program was about, I was really fascinated and I accepted their invite because it's something very similar to Wayne's World where they're in the basement, they have bands play, they have guests. That format, that medium of entertainment really doesn't exist anymore. Tom Green used to do it even before MTV in Canada. And I've always liked that aspect of just having a desk, having a host, having bands, having a few people in the audience. So when they contacted me, I mulled it over, watched some of their former stuff and said, heck yeah, I wanna check these guys stuff out. So it should be fun. That's where I'm heading now. I think I'm at the right place according to this wooden spray painted sign. Gotta go this way. So you make all these mm -hmm. and you sell them? You have mm -hmm. a little side business? A little or... Etsy store, yeah. These are all different sci-fi weapons. This is from Logan's Run? This is the, yeah, the flame gun that the uh, the Sandman used in Logan's Run. So you have all three running constantly making? Almost, almost all the time. And this is what they refer to as a 3D printer. Yeah. I'll run short little small pieces during the day and then overnight I'll run 12, you know, 12 hour prints. There's a fine assortment of beverages and snacks and pizza and a jackalope over here in the corner. Dave, Dave Coulier style. I was given this patch and I'm told that it glows in the dark and I'm chowing down on a piece of pizza. You got my name up there. It's not technically in lights. It's like on a TV, but, and this is Josh. He's the host. And this is where all the magic happens right here next to Morris. I like that you have a framed Morrissey photo. Originally he was for a bit, like it was gonna be a recurring bit, um, which I think we did on the second show. And the bit just didn't didn't really take off, but it, it didn't seem appropriate to get rid of his pictures. So. You never get rid of them. Once yeah. Morrissey is planted somewhere, you never get rid of them. And it's all filmed inside this cabin, inside this spooky cabin. Here waiting for you to mount the cameras on top of the tripods. I'm just waiting for us to get started. <laughs> Waiting for someone to show up and put the cameras there, but there they are. They're these little, they're these little teeny tiny webcams, and that's the live stream right there. This is something I'm not familiar. with. This is called professionalism. I never use. I never. No, no, seriously, I never use these microphones. People always complain about my audio. But you see, you have it. You have it nailed down. This this mounts on your shirt like this, like a little. It's like a dinosaur, and you get good audio from this. This is. It's called a lavalier. It's called a what? It's called a lavalier microphone. A lavalier. Yeah. I need to. You need to give me a lavalier. Well, uh, we'll can I have that. this? Can I have this one? Well, no. I mean, that one. <laughs> you need that one. I'm looking at the studio audience here, and I'm noticing a special guest back there on the wall, Don Knotts. Don Knotts. He showed up back there. Don Knotts. Don Knotts. Oh, Don Knotts. <laughs> Don Nazi? What? I was looking up there to see who was on the couch, and I just realized yeah. it's me. That's you. That's You're me right. up there. Look at that. That's that's so confusing. The camera, uh, the camera adds a jacket. That's what does. They it. say the camera adds about fifty pounds. In my case, eighty. Hey, everybody! Welcome to Spooky Talk Show. We got a special event, so let me hear some noise. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I don't know who it is. But he says he's a, that I'm a fan of his, so we're gonna find out in a minute. So the Colonel, it's me. Come in, tell Spoiler us what you got going on. It's me. Ladies and gentlemen, the Colonel. Yeah. All right. It's like I told you on the phone. I got all a special right. guest. He's coming down. It's Get me. ready. Right. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. But give me some kind of idea. What? Uh, what? Can you give me a hint? 
Oh, it's, me. Surprise. it's me, it's me. Well, it's someone you really like from YouTube. Okay, then it's, uh, oh, it's Red and Link from no, Good Mythical Horror. I caught this dude, he had like a Disney World jacket on. He was like <laughs> picking around, it's talking into a cell phone. Wait a minute, wait just a minute. Just being a, I mean, just, just nosing around the damn cabin, you know? Oh, wait a minute, I think a nosy YouTuber. Can, okay, nosing around an abandoned. There's a big dude. Cabin. I mean, he's big. He's bigger than me. This very model. disrespectful. I may have an idea. <laughs> so I grabbed the bag over his head and he he put up a fight, but I got him. All right, so standards. Oh, totally talk not true. He's embellishing this. All right. That's not really what that's happened. How we, that's how we book him here. Somebody open the small box and let Adam the Woo out. Get him. Over I'm coming out of the small box. Get him over here. Right, I'm coming right, out right, of the right, small right. box. Really, there was no box. I was just sitting over there eating pizza. Uh, so he did feed me. He did feed me. I am now officially the first person that has signed the door. It's for posterity. I put Adam the Woo was here, but escaped. If I ever return to these parts, there will be more signatures on the door. Here in the cave cabin spooky talk show. This TV is very poltergeist. Desk. Nightfall is about to rear its ugly head. And it's starting to rain. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Vlog over.